Welcome to Fab Movie. This video contains spoiler. Please watch carefully. The film opens on a stormy night. Tess Marshall arrives at an Airbnb that she booked at for 67 Barbary Street. But as she tries to check in, she cannot find the house key or get in touch with whoever booked her. Before she leaves, she sees a light turn on in the house, and she rings the bell. A man named Keith Toshko answers, and he says he booked the house as well. Since they cannot reach the bookers, Keith invites Tess to stay while they try to get things sorted. Tess is unable to book a hotel anywhere else and comes in. She takes a shower to release the stress of her travel. Keith invited her to share a bottle of wine. She explains that she is meeting with the filmmaker named Bonnie Zane for a job interview. Keith says he has seen her last film, despite Tess thinking nobody else would have seen it. They bond for a bit before going to bed. During the night, Tess wakes up to overhear Keith gasping in his sleep, likely due to night terrors. She tries to wake him up but ends up startling both of them. Keith denies anything is wrong. The next day, Tess goes for her interview. As she steps outside, she is surprised to see that all the other houses surrounding the Airbnb seem abandoned and dilapidated. Tess then goes to meet Bonnie at the restaurant. Everything goes well until Tess mentions where she is staying, and Bonnie warns her to get out of there quickly. When Tess returns to the house, a man named Andre runs after her and tells her to get out of the house. Although a bit spooked, Tess goes about her business and ends up going down toward the basement. The door locks behind her, and she has left her phone on the kitchen table. She then finds a rope attached to the wall and finds a secret entrance to a tunnel. Despite some initial hesitance, Tess goes into the tunnel for a little bit. She comes across a room with a bed, a camera, and a bloody handprint on the wall, as well as a staircase going further down, causing her to freak out. She runs back to the basement and sees Keith outside, so she gets him to help get her out. Tess explains to Keith what she saw and says they need to get out of there. Keith tries to reassure her that there is nothing serious down there, so he goes to check it out. After a while, Tess goes looking for Keith, and she walks down the staircase. She hears Keith screaming and calling for help. Tess finds him in the tunnel, and he says something bit him. Before they can run, a horrifying naked humanoid monstrosity, the mother, appears and smashes Keith's head until he is dead. An undisclosed amount of time later, screenwriter A.J. Gilbride is driving when he gets a call from his colleagues. They tell him he is being dropped from their latest project because a woman is alleging that A.J. raped her. He maintains his innocence, but even his accountant drops him from representation. AJ later goes out with a friend, all but outright admitting that he pressured the woman into sex. AJ later goes out of state to the house he is owning, which happens to also be the Barbary house. He arrives and finds Tess's luggage before going into the basement to investigate. He is found and chased by the mother before he falls into a pit where Tess is being kept as well. Jump back to sometime in the 80s, when Barbary Street was full of residents. A man named Frank, who lives in the same house, goes to a store to get baby products. He then spots a young woman and follows her back to her house. Frank dresses as a man from the electric company to get inside her house and unlock her bathroom window. 
When he returns home, his neighbor Doug tells Frank that he and his wife are selling their house. Back in the present, Tess tells AJ to be quiet and calm down. The mother then lowers a baby bottle down into the pit, which Tess drinks from, but AJ is less willing. The mother enters the pit and treats Tess like her child, but she growls and screeches toward AJ. The mother pulls AJ back to a creepy room where she forces him to breastfeed off her. Tess manages to climb out of the pit and begins to make her way out towards the window of the basement and is pulled out by Andre before the mother can reach her. Andre tries to take Tess to safety, but she insists on going back to free AJ. Tess calls the cops, but when they arrive, they believe that she is a strung out addict due to her disheveled appearance. She brings them to the house. But since she has no proof that there is any evidence of a crime, the cops leave. Tess waits until it gets dark to break into the house and get her keys. When she gets into her car, the mother emerges and tries to break into Tess's car, but she drives into the side of the house to try and kill the mother, but it just briefly knocks her out. Meanwhile, AJ has made his way into a room where he finds Frank, bedridden and close to death. AJ sees several tapes that Frank has kept of the women he has raped over the years. As AJ calls him out for how sick he is, Frank pulls out a gun and shoots himself in the head. AJ grabs the gun and goes out of the room. Tess is down there and calls out to him, causing AJ to get startled and pull the trigger. Tess is shot in the abdomen, but AJ helps her get out of the house. When they get outside, Tess sees that the mother is not where she originally was. She tells AJ she knows where they can run to. Tess brings AJ down by the water tower where Andre told her to go for safety. He explains to them that Frank owned the house and was most likely the source that booked the victims. He would kidnap women and rape them, producing children that he would also rape, and the mother is a product of incestuous rape that has been in the house for over 40 years. Although confident that she cannot find them, Andre is quickly proven wrong when the mother emerges and rips his arm off, then beats him to death with it. Tess and AJ run for safety and make their way up a water tower. AJ drops the gun just as the mother starts catching up to them. AJ thinks he can redeem himself and save both of them, so he grabs Tess and throws her off the tower. Knowing the mother will instinctively go after her baby. AJ runs down and sees the mother seemingly dead. Just as he tries to justify his actions to Tess, the mother springs back up and gouges AJ's eyes out with her thumbs before cracking his head in two. The mother then crawls over to nurture Tess, who grabs the gun. She has a slight look of remorse on her face before she pulls the trigger. Please hit like and subscribe to keep enjoying. We appreciate your feedback through comments.